Good evening, everyone. We welcome everyone to St. James on this 22nd Sunday of Ordinary Time. Following are the parish community announcements. We have extra copies of the 2018 pictorial directory at the parish office. If your family did not receive one of these directories, but you would like to have one, please stop by the parish office during business hours and pick up a copy. There is no charge for these, and please only one per household while supplies last. Catholic daughters are making reusable masks. They are cotton and feature a small seashell pattern, neutral colors. Please see the bulletin for email or phone number to contact if you would appreciate receiving one of these complimentary masks. Another week, another door to God's grace. This week, the door of service is the focus in another brief look at the St. James approach to stewardship and living the faith in this week's good news. Get your copy after Mass or check it out online on the St. James website or our Facebook page. At St. James, we worship as community of believers, and so as we begin this celebration, we invite you to stand, greet the people around you, Another gentle reminder to make sure your cell phones are turned off. Thanks. This evening, our celebrant is Father Zach Tucker, and he's assisted by Deacon Steve Nelson. Our opening song is on your song sheet. In this place, we will do verse 1. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are our source of love and understanding. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the sacrifice for our sins. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the door to salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumph. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. Sanctuary to 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are not thinking as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me, must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can, what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man, will come with his angels in the Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
if you were to go to the heart of Los Angeles in California, and you were walking around, you would find yourself sooner or later in a neighborhood with a population of over 100,000 residents by the name of Boyle Heights. By all accounts, you would be in the midst of pretty much the epitome of what you and I might imagine when we think of the streets. Situated in LA County, whose population is larger than 41 of the states in the United States, Boyle Heights is home to some of the 1,100 street gangs made up of over 100,000 members found throughout LA <laughs> County. It's also home to Homeboy Industries, the largest gang exit and rehabilitation center in the United States. Father Greg Boyle, a Jesuit, founded Homeboy in 1988 while he was pastor of the poorest parish in LA, St. Dolores Mission, which is also found in Boyle Heights. In his book, Tattoos on the Heart, a collection of stories from 35 plus years of working with the homies, as he calls them, stories both joyful and heart-wrenchingly sad, Father Greg writes about what has worked for Homeboy and what he has learned from serving those whom most of society has given up on. Homeboy has, among other enterprises, a bakery, a salsa and tortilla factory, and runs the largest tattoo removal clinic in the country. Not all their endeavors have been successful. Father Boyle notes that Homeboy Plumbing was probably doomed from the start. Quote, it never occurred to me that people might be leery of heavily tattooed ex-gang member plumbers fixing their sinks. He sums up the many lessons of his years working with and among the homies this way. You go to the margins not to make a difference, because then that's about you. You go to the margin so that the folks at the margins make you different. This week, our theme for Growing in God's Grace, Stewardship Renewal, is that of service. When we think of the word service in the church sense, I think we tend to picture mission trips to foreign countries, or at the very least, somewhere out of state. We picture doing things for other people, doing something that makes their life better. But if Father Greg is right, if our view of service is purely us going to the margins to make a difference, then it's all about us. In other words, it's selfish. It's simply too shallow a definition of service. How then are we to understand service in the Christian sense? Certainly doing things for other people is a good thing, but the meaning, indeed the need to serve in our lives is rooted in something much deeper. In our gospel today, Jesus gives his disciples, and by extension us, a recipe for the living of the Christian life, a life lived at the service of our brothers and sisters. Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Consider the cross. Perhaps the greatest instrument of combined torture and execution ever designed. Yet, like so many other occurrences throughout his life, Jesus turns the understanding of the cross on its head. Through him it becomes not an instrument of torture or execution, but an instrument of love. He goes to the cross willingly for you 
and for I, to open for us the doors of paradise, which had been barred through sin, for love of his creation, the Creator submits himself to the cross, and nothing will ever be the same. In the Christian tradition, we refer to this act as a self-emptying. Christ gave everything, even his life, for us. He had nothing left that he could possibly give. He emptied himself for us. Paradoxically, this act of self-emptying is the way in which you and I are most fulfilled in this life. We pour out our lives for those around us, those whom we love. This is the essence of Christian life, a life of service, and is totally the opposite of what the world preaches day in and day out. Again, that strange line from Jesus, whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. We can acquire a lot of things in this life that we think will make us happy, fulfilled, safe, comfortable. But the reality is, none of them will actually satisfy us. Self-gift, self-emptying, that brings satisfaction to our hearts. So back to the margins that Father Boyle talked about. How do the margins make us different? There are plenty of different cases to be made, I suppose gaining an appreciation for the humanity of others, or an understanding that we aren't so different from one another, or that by honoring the dignity of those you encounter, quote, you return people to themselves, as Father Boyle puts it. On a deeper level, though, I think service, particularly at the margins, makes us different because it is an encounter with Christ. And no one who truly encounters him can remain the same. It is only in encountering him, living for him, that we will find our life. That means losing what the world considers to be necessary, our safe, secure, insulated lives. And it involves our stepping out in faith and trust to be Christ to our fellow man. This is what service in the true Christian sense means. It's so much deeper than simply doing something nice for someone else. Instead, it is a radical embracing of the cross, that instrument of love, and a living a life of self-emptying, a pouring out of ourselves in love for those around us, as Christ did for you and for me. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, relying on God's unfailing promises, we present our petitions to our Father in heaven. For our church, especially for all those who educate others in the faith, that as we begin a new year, the Holy Spirit will fall afresh with wisdom and a desire for truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For the world's policymakers, that they approach their mission with mindfulness of the need for global peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the victims of recent storms and for all those leading rescue and recovery efforts, that all be protected from further harm and be brought to safety. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, especially those missing from our community today, that the Holy Spirit will call all back to the family of God through the witness of disciples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the victims of abortion, for the closing of the abortion facility within our parish boundaries, and the conversion of heart of all involved in the destruction pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, for all those who are sick, especially those who are suffering with COVID-19, may they be granted renewed health and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, especially for Jack Munchrath, and all those who have no one to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Ed and Dick Spethman, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayer requests placed in our prayer baskets, and for the special intentions that we carry in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, our soul thirsts for you, for your kindness is greater than life. Graciously hear all we bring before you today, spoken and unspoken, and grant these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Amen. Our song of preparation is Lead Me, Lord, on your song sheet. Lead me, Lord. i 
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, the blessed Joseph your spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice, his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Light and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, 
open your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs. With John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, and Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Do take a look at the good news this week uh, for the door of service. You can either read it on our website or get a hard copy from one of the others. Uh, additionally, uh, missalettes will be available in the back. We have a couple more boxes of them. Um, so if you would like to take one home uh, to use for mass, uh, please take one for your family, bring them back. Uh, rather not have you take one and then leave it, at least to sanitation problems and all that. But you're welcome to take one and use it uh, for mass in your daily mass. Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you. 